Okay, this is a topic that a lot of students have an issue with in statistics, especially when they get to probability. So I want to talk about that a little bit. This is called the addition rule, and I like to uh, remind my students it's the or case, um, the probability of A or B. So imagine I say I find, you know, the probability of event A happening or event B happening. That means that either A can happen or B can happen or both. So you have two scenarios. You have um, the first case when you have an intersection between the two events. Um, and then the second case we call it mutually exclusive when there is no intersection between the two events. So um, if you guys are good with a deck of cards, imagine I pick a king or a queen. I can't get a king or a queen at the same time if I only select one card, which means that those two events would be considered mutually exclusive. Um, but if I want a king or a diamond, well, there is one card that is a king of diamonds, so there is an intersection between the two, so that would be a non-mutually exclusive case. I'll show an example of each um, as well. Um, so if it is not mutually exclusive and there is an intersection, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A, the first event, plus the probability of B, the second event, minus the probability of A and B, the intersection. If they are mutually exclusive, there is no intersection, so the formula simplifies to just P of A plus P of B. So, for example, this is a table that um, deals with, let's say, a, a test result. Um, people go and they get drug tested, and so there are two outcomes. They can either have a positive result or they can have a negative result. Um, that doesn't always indicate that they use or don't use, so either they use or don't use. So let's just say they got a positive result, um, and, the, and the individual that was in that test actually does use. So, you know, when you get a positive result from a drug test, it implies that you do use. If the person actually does use, then we say that that's a true, let's see if that fits, positive test result. Right? It's correct. I got a positive test result, I use that drug, it's true, and it's positive. But if I have a positive result, and I really don't use, so I have a positive test result, which implies that I use. So now the company that I'm drug testing for thinks that I use, but I really don't. That's a horrible situation. We call that a false positive test result. If I come out negative, that implies that I don't use. But if I come out negative, my result is negative, and I actually do use, <laughs> lucky me, we call that a false negative test result. It's wrong, because it's a negative result, but I actually do use. Um, if I get a negative result, which implies that I don't use, and I really don't, then I call this a true negative test result. Um, so a lot of times what you'll be given are these two tables, two-way tables, so um, two, two rows, two columns. I already extended it into totals of each row and column, but if I want to determine all the individual that use in that test, I can add up these two cases and I get the total amount that actually did use in that test. If I want to determine the total amount of uh, individuals or subjects that did not use in that test, then I can add up these two values and get the total amount that did not use. If I want to determine how many total had a positive result from this test, I can add up these, add up this column and get the total positive results. And if I want the total amount of negative results, then I add up these two values and get the total amount of negative results. This um, number here is left. If I add up these two values, I get 317. If I add up these two values, I also get 317. This means that there are 317 individuals in the test period. So total who took the test, who took the drug test. Okay, so um, this is out of 317 subjects. All right, so <clears throat> let's, say, uh, let's see what you could be asked from this table. Let's start with find the probability. I'm gonna do simple probability first. Find the probability of somebody that uses, period. The probability of somebody that uses. So to calculate that, I would take the total amount that you use, 205, right? We already added that up and divide by the total amount of people in this test, which is 317. Now, let me grab my calculator really quick, because we 
We can also represent this probability in decimal form. So we're going to do uh, 205 divided by 317. Now I'm going to get, this is a squiggly equal line, approximately 0 0.647 rounded to the nearest thousandth. And typically in probability, we do three digits to the right of the decimal place. Okay, so again, just the probability of, that somebody uses. And I'm only selecting one person at random. Select one at random. If I'm selecting more than one, then, you know, things change. And I'll do a video of that also. Um, one more. Let's just assume that I want the probability of selecting someone that had a false negative test result. And again, I'm only selecting one. And I just want that one to have a false negative test result. Well, how many false negative test results were there? There were five false negative negative test results. So there are five out of the 317 that had a false negative test result. So technically that is my probability in fraction form. If I want to convert it to a decimal form, 0 0.016 rounded to the nearest thousandth. By the way, probability can also be represented in, um, uh, in uh, percentage form and to convert this decimal to a percent I just move the decimal place two places to the right and I get 64.7 percent chance that I randomly select one person and that person uses and there is an approximate 1.6 per seven chance a uh, percent chance that I randomly choose one person and they had a false negative test result okay um, that's just you know basic uh, probability let's assume that all right so i'm going to ask something else now so let me get rid of all this stuff i'm still only going to select one so uh let's assume that the person that i select let's see what i want um let's talk about the and case the probability that the person the person uses and um had a positive result how many use and had a positive result? The and is the intersection. Intersection. So here's the row that use, and here's the column of positive results. And what is the intersection of the two? 200. This many people use and had a positive result. So 200 out of the 317 used and had a positive test result. So 200 divided by 317 is approximately 0 0.631, which is in percentage form 63.1%. Okay, and this is the AND case. So the AND case is the intersection. All right, now I want to talk about the OR case. The OR case, which uh, a lot of people do get confused, and it's not as bad as it initially seems. Um, the idea is whether or not you have an intersection. So now we know how to determine the intersection is the AND. Let's talk about the OR. Find the probability that I randomly choose one person and that person uses, I'll do OR had a positive result. Now this is different. This is different. OR. OR is my addition rule. If I have an intersection, I use this rule. If I don't have an intersection, I use, use this. So if I don't have an intersection, we call those mutually exclusive events. So let's see if these are mutually exclusive events. Do I have an intersection of somebody that uses and had a positive result? Well, we just determined that there was an intersection. 200 people used and had a positive result. So there is an intersection, which means that these are uh, not mutually exclusive events. So I'm going to use that first rule um, here. So the probability of A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. In my case, A is uses and B is um, the positive result. So I want the probability that they use plus the probability of a positive result minus the probability of the intersection uses and positive. So let's determine the probability that somebody uses. And we said that's the whole row here. 205 out of 317 people use. What is the probability that they had a positive result? That's this column, positive result, 212. 212 out of 317. 
minus the intersection. Well, if I determine how many total people use, I have to count 200 plus 5. To determine how many total people had a positive result, I had to count 212. So the 200 is included twice so far in my probability, which means that's why I have to subtract the intersection 200 out of 317. Right? So I find the probability of the first, probability of the second, add them up, and subtract the probability of both if there is one. And that's how I determine my probability um, for an OR case if they are not mutually exclusive events. Now you can go across the top, 205 plus 212 minus 200, all over 317 because this is a common denominator. 205 plus 212 minus 200 divided by 317 is approximately uh, 0 0.685 or 68.5 percent in percentage form. Again, this is if my two events are not mutually exclusive. This is the OR case, the addition rule. Let me do another one. Okay. What if you are asked to find the probability of finding someone or randomly selecting one person and they do not use or had a positive result? Again, I hear or. Automatically, I'm going to think the addition rule. Are these events mutually exclusive? Do they have an intersection or not? Well, can I determine somebody that does not use and also had a negative, uh, also had a positive result? Yeah, I can have, there are 12 people that did not use and had a positive result. So there is an intersection and therefore, again, these are not uh, mutually exclusive events. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the probability of just the fact that they did not use. How many did not use? 112 out of 317 plus. How many just had a positive result? 212 out of 317 minus the intersection. How many did not use and had a positive result? Did not use and had a positive result? 12 out of 317. Go across the top, 112 plus 212. 112, oops, 112 plus 212 minus 12 divided by 317. Oh, I got a big one. Approximately 0 0.984 or 98.4% in percentage form. Now that's a large percent. You always want to make sure it makes sense with the situation. Um, if it is a large percentage, then it implies that it's more likely to happen. Okay. So far, we have had examples where they were not mutually exclusive. Let's see what it looks like when they are mutually exclusive. So let's find the probability of randomly selecting one person and they had a false positive or false negative test result or implies addition rule. Um, so I have to ask myself whether or not these two events are mutually exclusive. Well, can I have a false positive and a false negative at the same time with one person? Well, I can't have a, well, here's a false positive. Here's a false negative. There's no intersection of the two. They can't happen at the same time if I only select one person, right? They cannot happen at the same time if I only select one person. And therefore, they are mutually exclusive events, which simplifies my formula. I just determine the probability of the false positive which is 12 out of 317, and add to that the probability of a false negative, which is 5 out of 317, and there's nothing to subtract because there is no intersection. So this becomes 17 over 317, or approximately uh, approximately 0 0.054. 0 0.054 or in percentage form, approximately 5.4%. It is low. Um, actually, we would want that probably even lower if we're going to um, take a drug test. False positive or false negative, those are incorrect um, results. You don't want incorrect results when you go to a drug test. So 5.4% chance of getting an incorrect result 
It's pretty high. Probably would not want to take that size. All right, good luck, guys. If you need any more examples of this, I know it can be difficult, then let me know.